I have a, a habit uh, while, while I'm preaching. And when I start talking about the Bible, I just get really excited. And if I talk about the things of God, I just, I don't stop. And, and I know that's a, a habit that I need to overcome. But the Lord spoke to my wife this morning. And I, believe, and I believe that the Lord wants to use my life today. To be honest, I don't know exactly how God's going to use her. Amen. But have an understanding that God has put within us power. Amen. We have a, a, a powerful thing that's been placed within us called our testimony. And through that, God can touch people's hearts. And the reason why is because it shows God's glory at work in our lives. Amen. So I want to introduce my wife to you this morning. Amen. I believe this is her first time to, meet, to, to do something like this. Amen. Uh, I, I believe she's. I think she's probably nervous today. This is her first time to do something like this. But it's important that we're able to, to overcome our, our, our fears. It's important that we uh, are able to follow the direction of the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> This is my first time to do something like that. I'm, ve I'm very nervous. I want to read from Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. And from verses 28 through 30. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Beginning of verse 28, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's pray together that his will would be done here today. <laughs> I don't have a lot of deep education. 
<laughs> and I'm not even good at speaking Japanese. <laughs> it could be that even those that speak Japanese might have a hard time understanding what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I was born and raised, and I only lived in Okinawa, and so there's places, there's words that I'm not really sure if that's my local dialect or if that's actual Japanese. <laughs> I promise to do my best, but I ask that you would just bear with me and be, be forgiving towards me. When I woke up this morning, the Lord spoke to me immediately. Before I had time to do anything, the Lord spoke to my heart. The Lord told me to, te- to give my testimony. And I, of course, immediately began to think of that the Lord, the Lord woke me to testify about how I had been healed. Uh, but the Lord told me not to testify about that, but to testify about my uh, nephews. That, My upbringing. <laughs> I didn't tell my husband this. <laughs> I really didn't want to do this. And so the Lord had spoken to me. I didn't say anything to him, and I just watched him as he was preparing for his sermon for today. And he was praying the whole time, trying to get a message. And I was just watching. And after about an hour or two, he, he turned to me. And he said, I, I really feel that, for some reason, I really feel that you're supposed to testify today. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> if I if I could, I wanted to get out of it, but yeah, I know. I'm not I may not look this way from my appearance, but I'm actually a very a very shy person. <laughs> My shyness is very uh, is extreme. Before I um, married my husband and before I was in church, there was a place that I would go to every day. And my husband's friends were all, would always come to that place. But I was so shy that even though I would go there, I, I was so shy I couldn't even get out of the car and go in to say anything. And so for me to be able to stand here and talk in front of you is a very, uh, very unusual thing for me. <laughs> and so it was important that I, I was ignoring him even though he was praying for two hours and 
but the Lord has given me a direction, so I want to testify, I want to share with you about my upbringing. My family is growing up as a family of eight. But while I was still young, my parents divorced. Really, the only memories that I have of my dad were of him being violent. The only memories that I have of my dad are of, of him being drunk and of, of him putting his hands on my mom. And once I start to think about it, it's like the memories continue on like a movie. They just go on and on. If I remember correctly, my parents split up when I was in kinder around kindergarten age. At that time, unbelievably, there was really no law against domestic violence. Uh, at that time, as long as the person who was who was um, being abused, if they didn't say anything, there was nothing that could, that could happen. As long as they didn't die from the violence, there was it wouldn't turn into a a a, a case of a crime. And so my, at one point my mother was dropped from the fourth story of our apartment building. One time my mother was, was hit by a car violently enough that her uh, internal organs, some of them ruptured, and she was only saved through emergency surgery. And even after that, my parents continued to fight. And so no matter how much my dad would, would uh, abuse my mom, it would never come to court. It would never go to the police. And so I, I had a my oldest sister who is uh, older than me. Um, she's a, a bit older than me. I've actually never even met her. I actually didn't even know that I had an older sister. I, I didn't know that she even existed until I was about 20 years old. The reason why I've never been told of, of her was because when I, before I was born, when, when, I, when my mother was out working, um, my older sister, who was eight months old at the time, was crying, and my father got angry and, and strangled her and killed her. And 
Because my sister died, he was convicted of the crime and he did go to prison for a while. But for some reason, my mother didn't get away from my father. She was afraid that if she did try to run away from him, that he would just find her and then it would be her turn to be killed. And so once my father was out of prison, my mother accepted him back and and my oldest, my brother was born, and my sister was born, and I was born. And so until my parents left when I was still quite young, I, I never thought of a father as being someone who would protect you or love you. I, I thought of a father as being something that was just scary. And so my mother, I remember when I was young, my mother was very busy and when my parents had split up, my father had a lot of debt that he left with my mother. It was about $50,000. So she was hardly ever at home. She would work in the morning, come home for a little bit, take care of some in the house, and then have to leave and go to, to her job again. And so I, I did have an understanding of, of how hard my mom was working to try to provide for us. Uh, and next to where I lived, one of my father's relatives lived there. And so this man who was living with my aunt, who was of no relation to us actually, uh, from when me and my sister were young, he began to abuse us sexually. And me and my sister understood how busy our mother was and how much she already had on her plate, so we didn't want to bother her with what we were doing. So we never told her about it. And now looking back on it, I understand just how unfair and how wrong what he did was. But he would tell us and try to reassure us with his words of how he cared for us and how he loved us, but then he would do those things to us. And so I really, from a young age, I began to develop an opinion of people that people would just say whatever they wanted or whatever they had to to get what they wanted. And so I 
And so I thought that's how everybody was, that people would just, you know, they could just say whatever they wanted and it had nothing to do with what was true. And I, I made a decision in my heart that I would never trust anybody. And I, I thought, you know, everybody else is just doing whatever they want. Why shouldn't I do it too? So I, I just focused completely on doing whatever it was that I wanted to do. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't do anything as bad as what those people were doing. And that's what I thought. I thought, you know, I'm not doing anything as bad as them. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't hurt anybody. But there was a time where through my husband I, I started to go to church. Until that time I had never been to a place that is called a church. I didn't know there was a Bible. <laughs> to be honest, in school, math wasn't even one of my good subjects, and so I, I didn't even remember the name Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so whenever I would see, whenever I would see a cross on a church or anything else, I always thought somehow they were associated with the Red Cross Hospital. <laughs> And so I had absolutely no idea of what they could possibly be doing at that church. <laughs> Just when I started to go to the church, when I came to the church uh, in Japan, there was a famous uh, or infamous cult called Om. Uh, Om. And they uh, were responsible for many crimes and, and terrorism. And it was all over the news, all over television, it was everywhere that what they were doing. And so I, I had absolutely uh, zero positive image of, of any religion. And another thing that helped motivate that was that my mother at one point uh, began to practice a certain religion. And, and it was at a time where in our family we had no money. We had so little money that to buy milk for my youngest sister, we would you know, pull out all the couch cushions and, and look for one yen that we could get together to somehow have enough money to uh, it might be a little bit of, uh, hard to believe that, that that could be that way, uh, but it, it really was just like that. <laughs> we had so little money that when when we would have curry fried rice, it was it was just fried rice or just rice that had some curry powder on it, and that was our curry fried rice. And it had to be just then that my mom decided to start practicing religion. 
金閣が貼られた鉄を持ってきたんです。金が貼られた。Yeah, a, a bottle about this size that had、um, gold、um, foil on the outside. And, and she said that we, each person in our family, had to have one. And she was told, you know, pray towards this bottle that is overlaid with gold. And she was told, if you do this, then, you know, you'll, your life will be easier. And so,、uh, I, I believed what my mom said, and so I, I'm told of my family that at that time I was the most fervent、uh, one of our family to, to do that and pray towards that bottle. But after one year, two years, nothing changed, you know, not for the better at least, but on the contrary, it just continued to get worse. <laughs> After about one or two years, my mother had an affair with this、uh, religious leader and then had a child from that affair. And I thought, wow, our burden just increased, but our health didn't increase. There was nothing that had changed for the good in our house, and we just we fought all the time. And I asked my mom, what, what point is there in having a God like this? I, I, aren't, aren't I doing what I'm supposed to? I'm praying every day to it, right? Uh, of course, my younger sister you know, hadn't done anything wrong, but I, I really was、uh, really pressed my mom and why, why are we doing this? Why, why do we have to do this? It's not helping anything. <laughs> but but my, <laughs> my, mom, my mom told me. She said, Well, yeah, that's true, but, but just think about it. There has to be a meaning in the lack of change. And so from that point, I just I detested religion. And so and, and then there was the Aum、uh, cult that was. Doing all those terror, terrorism and, and things. And so when someone brought a church to me, I, I kind of was like, yeah, uh, uh, that's not for me. And so I had absolutely no interest whatsoever in any religion. But there was one. <laughs> Time where a situation was so that I had to go to church. And the first time I went to church, <laughs> to be honest with you, I, I didn't listen at all to what the, the preacher was saying. You, you may wonder, like, how did you not listen that much? I was sitting on the front row. But I was not listening to what he was saying. I was asleep. And, and unfortunately, when he said, let's all stand, he woke me up. And so, like I said before, I didn't know who Jesus was. I didn't know anything about the Bible. And I, I, about God, I believe that either God didn't exist or if He did, He was a terrible, terrible person. I, I had no idea what, what purpose or meaning my life could possibly have. 
みんな嘘つきばかりだしたと思う thought, そう思ってます思っていたね I thought everybody's a liar. なぜなら自分たちのしたいことだけしかしない人ばっかりしかいないと思ってた I thought everybody just they would lie and say whatever they had to do to get what they wanted from somebody. ですから私は誰も信用しないし、もう死ねるんだったら早く死にたいと思ってたんです。そんなに人生は意味がないと思ってたんです。私はただ言われるがまま寝ずに And I really didn't want to do what he said, but I, I felt guilty because I had slept through his whole sermon, and so I felt pressured to obey him and stand up. そしてその時のこの説教師はちょうどこのドン監督だったんですけれども。彼は関係なく、どうぞ前の方にいらしてくださいと言われました。And, and, you know, through, said, you know, で、ちょうど隣にはこの初馬姉妹と初馬兄弟がいたので、とてもお世話になってたので。逃げることはできないなと思ってそのまま前に出て行ったんです。And, and so with my lack of understanding of, of Christianity or the Bible or who Jesus was, I went to the front. で本当に私は何の知識もないのにもかかわらず、そこでただ言われるがまあ、まあ、あなたのどうぞ罪をただイエス様に許してくださいって言えばいいんだよ、悔い改めたらいいんだよって言われました。And so, I, with my lack of knowledge, I went to the front and I just did what as I was told. And when they said, you know, why don't you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and ask for, and why don't you repent, I just did what they said. ですから私はただ本当にただ罪を許してくださいと。And so I prayed, forgive me for, for my sins. So when, I, when I prayed that, I didn't really feel like I was praying. But you know, they told me, oh, say, you know, ask Jesus, you know, forgive you for your sins. So I just said, oh, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I just said some words. ただ聖霊をくださいって言いなさいって言われました、次は。And, and the next day, they told me, oh, and now, now just ask for the Holy Ghost. 聖霊をくださいって言いました。And so I said, oh, give me the Holy Ghost. すると、本当に驚くことに、今まで感じたこともない。私は本当に愛を一切信じていなかったのに、愛を感じたんです。And, and to my utter amazement, I had never felt love in my life up until that point. But when I said those words, even though I was just saying words, I felt the most warm love come to me. I felt as though there was someone who from behind had wrapped their warm arms around me and, and was embracing me. 私がずっと探し求めていたのはあこれなんだってことを気づきました。Instant, 私の人生にははっきり言って何も希望がありませんでした。No、私の家族は私の特に父私からすると父は本当にひどいことをしたと思います。Of to, uh, you know, my, my father had been such a horrible person to me and my, to my family growing up. My family had absolutely no hope. We had a lot of debt. My family, we, we couldn't even trust each other, and so we split apart as a family. But 
But when I met Jesus for the first time in my life, I felt what love was. I didn't even know who he was. Who is Jesus? I had no, no idea what the answer to that question was. I didn't even I, I didn't believe I, I had a need for God. There, there's no need for me to, to understand all about the Bible to, to at that point know who God or who Jesus was. But when, when we reach out to God in, in purity from our heart and in honesty, He will always answer us. And uh, I'm sure bro Brother Doe and Brother and Sister Haas were, were praying for us. But, but them standing there and praying for me didn't change my life. But the one thing that changed my life was feeling the love of Jesus surrounding me. So the reason why I'm here today isn't for religion. Because the reason why is because that day I didn't find religion, but that day I met Jesus. I really don't have any knowledge. But we don't need knowledge. But if we have a heart to seek God, that's enough. As my wife was speaking just now, I, uh, it brought back to mind many, many things. Amen. We were saved. We came to the church at the same time. And I, my life was, was very different from my wife's life. Amen. But we got saved at the same time. I had known about who Jesus was. <laughs> and I was taught about who he was when I was in middle school, so I know a little bit about him. Amen. So I, I knew a little bit about Jesus. But I just knew that he was, he was a, a person in history. Amen. But the first time my wife came to church, I was with her. And that was my first time to actually go to church as well. My, my life was, was very sad as well, but in a very different way. If you have about three hours, I'll just go ahead and tell you about it. But I know you don't have to. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take your time. But I want to tell you today. Whether it's our first time in church or not. God's love towards us is exactly the same. Whether we have knowledge about who He is or not, but regardless of what kind of life we have, it doesn't matter to Him. It doesn't matter to His love. 
関係ないんです。It doesn't matter to him what our life is like. だから彼は無償権の愛で私を愛しています。Because he loves us with a love that is without condition. Amen. でただ、主がなさろうとしていることは。But what God is trying to do, 主はその愛を持ってその人々を救い。With his love, he wants to save people. And he wants to change their lives and, put, and show his glory through their lives. These people, he wants, to,、uh, he wants to give them something that they have never had before, something that they've never experienced in their lives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There is one name that is, is given to us. And that name can change our lives. I'm one of those people that, that their life was changed. And by the name that they were given to us. And that name that they were given to us. And that name that they were given to us. 人生を変えられた人がたくさんいると信じます。Amen. ということは私たちがその証人なんです。So、でもまた同時にこの中でイエスのことをまだ知らない。But I know that there's also some here today that maybe, like me and my wife were that day, had no knowledge of who Jesus is. Amen. あなたの神に、あなたを救うために、イエス様はもう2000年を前に、十時間の上で死なれて、あなたのために命を投げ寄ってくださったんです。For your salvation, whether you know about him or not, for your salvation, 2000 years ago, Jesus gave his life for you. Amen. それこそが無償の愛なんです。And that is his unconditional love. そしてあなたも今日からその人生が変えられていくことができます。And your life can be changed as well. 今この中でまだイエス様のことをしたい人がどれだけいるか私には分かりません。I don't know how many people there are here today. まだ私を知っている人もいるでしょう。And there are some that I'm, I'm sure you know. でも私たちが知っていたとしても、私の人生は知ることに、もっと知ることに人生を作り変えられていきます。But our lives are changed through our experience with Him and when we grow with Him. Don't do that, I'll touch you that time. We can all stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch your son, but watch him. Yes, I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to go to the church. My wife and I came to, came to church with no knowledge. The second one is the church. I'm going to go to 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 the church. まだその時人数を私の妻は言っていました。そのポイントなんです。その時教会に行った人数はたったの6人です。想像してみてください。この広さに、この広さに6人だけです。私と私と妻は一番前の席の真ん中に座っているんです。で、右側は弾ま兄弟。左側は弾ま姉妹。サンドイッチです。え<笑>ね<笑>、そして私たちはその中で45分間寝てしまったんです。<笑>あの東京で暑いこのメッセージ、ああ、ラップのメッセージの間。ええ、ね、ええ、ね。その状況でやっても。救いを受けることができるんです。あなたは人生を変えるこの瞬間を。得ることができるんです。神様の時なんて関係ありません。私たちのシチュエーション、状況なんて全く関係ありません。神様の時なんて関係ありません。神様の時なんて関係ありません。神様の時なんて関係ありません。神様の時なんて関係ありません。神様の時なんて関係ありません。神様の時なんて関係ありません。神様の時なんて関係ありません。神様の時なんて関係ありません。神様の時なんて関係ありません。神様の時なんて関係ありません。神様の時なんて関係ありません。神様の時なんて関係ありません。神様の時なんて関係あ The only thing that you have to do is just to believe the word. That's the only condition. So, 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 that's the
But when we obeyed, God saved us. ただ従ったんです。ただ従ったんです。ただ従ったんです。ただ従ったんです。ただ従ったんです。ただ従ったんです。ただ従ったんです。ただ従ったんです。ただ従ったんです。ただ従ったんです。ただ従ったんです。
今注目をしてください。注目をしてください。
この、えー、天地を想像された神なんです。感謝しているだけではなくあなたのことを思っています今日は本当に神が導き与えたいそして東京大また東姉妹東姉妹がこう証しをするように導いてくださったと信じています本当に人々が天竜を尽くして主に従うとするとき、そして教会に行って何が起こるか分かりません。えもちろん、ヘア兄弟も今日教会で説教すると、彼はそのように思っていました。ヒアキョウは主からの導きを求め,え求めていましたですが主が彼に示されたことはあなたが今日説教するのではなくえ妻が証しをするように、えー、そしてええ彼の妻はえいつもえこのように語ることはないということを知っていたんですえ本当に神の方法は興味深いですそして楽しいですえ神が何をされるかわかりませんがいつもそれは良いことですもう一度私たちは神に感謝を捧げましょう私たちは愛し私たちのことを思い祝福を注いでくださったことをそのことのように神に感謝しましょう今日主が人々の心に触れてくださったこと本当に一番大切な知るべきことそれは神はあなたを愛していてあなたのことを思っていて今までこの本当集会において素晴らしい時を得ていませんか共にイエス様に感謝しましょう。